Leaving a Legacy. That is the title I've chosen to this presentation. And it is my personal legacy. What I'm planning to leave behind me after I leave you and I leave the rest of the world. That is the legacy. That is part of the journey you people are going to run through with me, please, if you bear with me. Happy New Year. It's 2050 today. And this is how you may look like. It's 2050. If you're still young enough, you may look like this. I'm sure the ladies are so jealous. They, don't, they wanna see how they do look like. You might be one of those, yeah? <laughs> All right, so be ready for it, right? And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be so emotional. We might be somewhere here, right? People said he's gone or she's gone. So the question here I have is, is what do you want to be known for? And that is the legacy. This is where you start. What do you want people to remember you for? What you have done? What's great things that you need to be proud of, that you need to list them today? So tomorrow, your kids, your family, the society, the company, the country, and all, they still remember you, something good that you have done. It's never too late. Never too late. If you haven't thought of your legacy, it's never too late. And please don't say, I lost my way. I'm lost, I'm very lost. I hear a lot of people whenever I go, it's not only here. As I said, I've spoken about 60 countries for the last 15 years of my life. And the same question may come, you know, people who really made so much achievements, so much certification, so much high at the, at, at the society, and still they feel they're really lost. They're lost their way. They don't know why, it, what's the purpose they're having. I don't want you to be one of those uh, people. No, you have to find a solution for this. I'm sure the rest of the speaker wouldn't like it because it takes time to keep shifting from, you know, I don't know if I have to shoot you there, then it may work, but please, three questions. Keep in mind three questions. Three questions that you need to ask yourself to leave a great legacy behind. The first question is, how do you want people to think about you and talk about you when you're gone? Right? The second question, what kind of mark or marks could be? Do you want to live on the world? The third one, what do you want to, to do world to improve the life of other people? Right? So if you ask your question, your three questions in a very peaceful mind, away from the lousy, noisy places, then you'll come with a, at least a direction to where, where you should sit on this life. Now it's good, thank you. This is my legacy, so I want you again to be so much pumped up. Smile, when we talk about legacy, it doesn't mean we talk about death and we have to be sad the rest of their life. No, don't do that. I want you to be the way how this gentleman looks here, excited about the legacy they wanna leave. And that's why I see the tragedy of life is not about death. The tragedy of life is what we let die inside of us while we're living. So please don't let the good inspiration, the good story, the good deeds, the good person in you to die before you die, right? So keep that, keep that inspiration. These are some of my legacies. All those organizations I've been building for the last 15 years in my life. And you can see them, some of the information more in the, on, the, on the website right here at the bottom of the page, <coughs> right? And, and, one more. This is the one. At least sustainable development goals. That is my main legacy, if you would, in a way. This has to be, this has turned to a book now. And the good news is that the book is already completed. The editing phase. It is going to a publishing house soon. And hopefully, inshallah, by the Valentine Day. You know when is the Valentine Day? We're gonna release the book. So please stay tuned. But this Valentine's going to be red Valentine. It's going to be green Valentine. All right, that, because that is during our wee week, water and energy week. All right, so we'll be, that is the, the plan. The soft launching will be, inshallah, next year on, on that. I'm sure. Please don't smash your head against the wall or against your colleague next to you. 
yes, it's not about another sustainable development. Is this sustainable development, by the way, presentation? It is more than that. This is a journey. I'm going, you, I'm going to take you through a real journey of mine, which moved me from meaning making to promise keeping journey. Meaning ma making means that when you go that extra mile in your job and the life, that you don't wake up in the morning and you put 101 excuses and reason why not to go to work. The meaning job, when you love your job, when you have passion, the meaning of your job is when you wake up in the morning so excited, is not because of the paycheck at the end of the month, but because of the love you have. That is the meaning making job. If you reach this, believe it or not, if you reach this stage, then you'll be moving to the next stage, which is promise keeping. You move your journey to the totally new landscape called promise keeping. You want to do something different. You feel that I am a different person. I need to do a different thing. I need to do something really good, right? People would remember me and I would remember them also. So how do you know that you are on this promise keeping journey? You are in the promise keeping journey. I will answer if you said you're still with me. Yes. You're still engaged with me? Yes. Thank you, shukran. Right, when you have the past, the present, and the future times work together in your mind at the same time. You have lessons drawn from the, the past and you are enjoying this every single second, not even a minute of the day where you're living in, and then the present, you're very inspired about creating a better tomorrow. So when you have the three times moving around in your mind, then you call this the mindfulness leader. Then you're a mindful leader, mindfulness leader. And this is the stage where you claim, you stand up in front of the whole world and I say, I lead a life. Life does not lead me. This is the stage when you, leave, when you reach that promise keeping, right? So I created my vision. My vision is very clear for the rest of my life. It says to work with individuals like you people, innovative organizations, I'm sure we have good ones around here, to improve the social, the economic, environmental living standards worldwide and the condition for millions of people who haven't seen the beauty of sustainable development and inclusive growth. So is everyone almost here ready to join hand with me, with us? Why now? Why now? There's some of the facts here. This is about 836 million people still live in extreme poverty around the world. Less than 1.25 US dollar a day. Can you imagine? We still have over 836 greenhouse for those who love environment around here. They have doubled. It's almost 50% compared to the only 1990. 50% has increased in the green. But that is not the end of the story. Look at this again. We have 1.6 billion have no access to electricity. So those who are in the electricity market, you see how much market is waiting for you out there. You have 1.6 billion people, they need your electricity, they need your help. 2.5 billion, again, they don't have access to proper sanitation program. And about 1.8 billion, again, always talking a big B, billion, have no access to safe drinking water. And about again, 900 million have no access to transportation system. So you can see how deep cut in the economy and the social and the environment we have. So what? I'm sure some of you say, so what? I don't care. And there are people just like, honestly, but that's fine with me. But for me, it's different. 
for me the purpose of life is a life of purpose it is a life of purpose that is the purpose of a life to me so it is a life of purpose so when you're in the life of purpose this is what the life means to me now after reaching such achievements and being seen like a probably the most wanted or a hero on such programs or organization or standing up next to presidents of countries or chief ministers or prime ministers or minister or whomever, right? This is the life to me now. I am not more than a collection of experiences. I'm not that person. I'm not a person with talent or collected talent, if you would. I am grounded deep inside a personal values, systems, promises that I have teased out in my life. That is who I am now. So my titles, or whenever I see all these things, right? Why I'm holding this? To me, it's a source of pride. Yes, thank you. I feel good. My wife, my kids, they would love to see this, right, about their daddy. But to me, it's never a source of identity. This is not my identity. It's my bride, but never been my identity. Right? So I created, after traveling with the UN for more than seven years at the Higher Commission of Refugees, worldwide, traveling from hotspot to another, seeing what the most of you haven't seen, experiencing what most of you haven't experienced, being on the ground floor, being on the dancing floor, meeting the two extremes, People are eating using the, the gold forks and silver knives, and people who are eating grass from the roads to survive. So I've, I've lived and I've seen the two extremes in my life. So I came up with 21 goals. As I said, I have written a book, small book called I Am Committed for the Global 17 Global Goals. So I am very much committed to those goals. I love them, I supported them, and I've been supporting them. But I thought those goals are missing some good goals like happiness, tolerance, children rights, women empowerment, and the list goes on. So you'll see it here, right? So can I move on? My first legacy or my first, my first goal is called quality education. I did not say education. I don't want any type of education. I'm after quality education, right? And I remember three years back, I had the chance to sit with His Excellency, late president of Singapore, S.R. Nitin. This is, by the way, one of the uh, highest served president in Singapore. He served three terms. Well, no, none so far since the inception of Singapore, anyone has served three terms. So he's the only president. He's such a, a soft-hearted. And I had the chance to meet with him in person. Before he died, he left us, unfortunately, but that's a life again. But it's a legacy he left. I mean, he left a couple of good legacies around. And I remember we spent almost an hour plus in his office, myself only and him, no one else. What is talking about the challenges facing the world and mainly through education, we both of us agreed that through education uh, uh, and quality education, we can make a difference. And we couldn't agree of this great gentleman, Nelson Mandela, what he said, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So if you want to change the world, first start with the education, right? The second goal is creativity and innovation. That is my second goal, if you would. I came up with my own terms called cultural thinking, which is the blend of critical thinking, which most of you they are aware of, and the blend of lateral thinking. As you know, the critical thinking is about judgmental thinking, about very systematic A, B, C, D, that through analytic, you, you end up to a result. The lateral thinking is about the creativity, that you think non-conventional way of thinking to receive, to reach that, the, the solution or the solutions you're looking for. So mixing of both, and that is my debated bone. I think uh, all of us are gifted. God loves all of us. He loves us, and he has given this opportunity. So each one of us has both. Don't think that I'm, I'm, I'm a loser. You're not a loser. You only need a way to train yourself and to train your brain to get the maximum out of yourself. All right? So this is what they call uh, think outside the box and think inside the box. 